Okay, hi guys. So, back with part two, um, looking at disc bulges and sadica and kind of what you're going to do in terms of a rehab plan or what you could possibly do. Um, so, back again with Aiden. So, those of us in the first video, you see the first video, but he came in in the first video, um, very active disc bulge that was causing sadica. So, obviously, the priority there is predominantly, we did do some active work, but really the, the kind of the priority there is, is the passive work, things like disc recovery, not stepping into too much flexion day to day, is movement and posture habits to let that disc bulge begin to kind of, you know, retract, heal, gristle, and kind of settle down and take some pressure off that static nerve. So, after a week that's happened, the static has gone, but now what he's got now is that we've now obviously that's brought attention to what's really going on with his hip and his calf. So if you look in this first video when he's walking, he's still a bit awkward uh, with that left leg. It's better, like he can put weight on that leg now, um, but it's still not quite where it needs to be. So there may still be a little bit of irritation on that nerve, but predominantly now what's inhibiting him is actually instability of his hip, which is caused by the inhibition of the glute on that left side. So again, when we talk about um, back issues, we may have got indeed nerve impingement type issues going on, um, mechanical problems, but on top of that, the, the body would have reacted in ways to try and solve that problem that would have caused muscular impairments. So his actual control over his glute has become impaired, which has made his hip more unstable. The hips more unstable, which then means the rest of the leg is now more unstable. So the, the calf, the problem he's got his calf, um, or the reason why his calf feels weak, is it's kind of working double time to stabilize that leg from the kind of the far end and then kind of trying to keep the hips somewhat stable as well when he walks. Today, um, as we start to reintroduce some more work in terms of kind of active work with kind of getting layers of armor back on again and getting that glute up to scratch. So we start off with a front plank. So I chose a front plank instead of a McGill curl for him just because he's still a little bit fresh with that disc bulge. Um, and sometimes with the McGill curl, people aren't careful. Obviously you get a bit of compression in both of them, but the McGill curl is a little bit of a danger. You can get a little bit of flexion if you're not careful. And we know for Aiden that compressed flexion makes his disc issue worse. So I don't want any danger of that creeping back in again. So we want the front plank, um, just because there's less of a danger of him slipping into flexion, as long as he's good with his technique. Um, it's a little bit of a harder exercise, but he's a fairly you know, robust young man, so he, he's fine with that one. So that we switched on, um, used that for the, sort of the first layer of armor to switch back on again. Then went into level two side bridges. Uh, reason we can do level two side bridges is because before Christmas we'd had him on those before that big sort of flare up. Um, and the thing with the level two side bridges, it really starts to kind of separate and highlight the ability to kind of let the hips move, but keep those obliques and keep that core locked in and kind of separate movement about the hips from that kind of lateral stability that we need. And then once we had that, so we got a little bit of stability locked in, then it was time to get to work on the glutes. Uh, what we did for him, um, first off, is we did a Dr. Lock clam, or a modified Dr. Lock clam. So those familiar with clam normally have your legs kind of tucked up. But the trouble is that with a lot of people, especially they've got glute inhibition, is they'll just do more work through particularly their TFL and particularly their glute medius as well without actually getting the glute max to help out in any way, shape or form. So by using this modified position, um, that I learned from Dr. Andrew Lock by stretching the bottom leg out and then kind of you know, hooking the top leg in behind that ankle, um, it kind of puts you in a more favorable position or a position where it's harder to cheat. It's actually easier to use the glutes in the way that we want to use them. As long as you're going smooth and steady, you have to be careful we're not just like flipping a pelvis around. We are just literally rotating that femur in the hip socket to get that nice controlled movement. So what we're doing here is we're using the idea of um, post-activation performance enhancement. So what we're doing is we're kind of working up the ladder in terms of glute challenges, starting with something relatively easy, small controlled movement, then the next level a bit more complicated, and then we'll go to like a big, almost like a compound movement for the glute, I guess you'd call it. We'll look at something, you know, more challenging, um, by looking at a, a glute bridge um, or hip thrust. So we start with Andrew Locke's um, lock clams. So obviously there we're working um, external rotation with the glutes. So we did one set of 50 on each side just to get things kind of teed up. You definitely noticed on the left, it was a lot more challenging and the leg could barely move. And once we had that locked in, then we looked at uh, glute angels. So that's on your front, 
um, and you've got to really pack in that gap between your hips and the floor and drive your glutes and floor, keep that tension in your glutes. Your feet can raise off the floor very slightly, but you've got to maintain that tension into hip extension with your glutes the whole way through. And then from there, then we basically look at abduction. So bring the legs apart and close together again, just nice and smooth as, as smooth as you can while using your glutes. So we had three sets of 25 on those. So by the time we've done those, the glutes are already screaming. And then once we've gone into glute bridges, um, we've kind of worked our way up that ladder. And now we've got this kind of slightly bigger, more challenging movement, which is going to basically challenge the glutes with hip extension, a bit of abduction, and a bit of external rotation all at the same time. They were really locking in. Um, but you can see on here, you can see, when I come around to the right angle, you can see that left leg is definitely a lot more feeble in terms of that external rotation, abduction than the right side. Um, so even though he felt the left glute was screaming um, and really working its guts out, it wasn't quite getting to the same position as the right side, but that's something that will improve over the next week. So again, using those kind of that kind of ladder of working on easier challenges for the glutes and then working into the bigger exercise, we've got you know, better activation, uh, but we get a better result that we can actually feel the glute doing its job properly. So that's the key is with back issues. Yes, there may be some nervous system issues or impairments going on, but once that's started to settle, um, we then need to look at what the muscles are actually up to and start to correct those issues as well. So we've got basically to do you know, two things, um, there's sort of two problems to solve. And he'll find, Adrian will find over the next week, um, as long as he's good with his, doing his exercises, as those Dr. Lock clams, glute angels and glute bridges get stronger and more even between the left and the right, he'll find his natural walking pattern will start to return and that calf will feel stronger because now it's not trying to do multiple jobs. Um, it can actually just focus on what it's supposed to do when he's walking and actually help propel him forward rather than sort of worrying too much about stabilising the whole leg on its own because now the glute's done its fair share of work.